U.S. Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel had an up and down visit in China this week. Hagel made his first trip to China since becoming the U.S. Defense Chief. He exchanged tough words with China's Defense Minister about China's extension of its airspace close to Japan and South Korea. Uh, every nation uh, has uh, a right to establish uh, air defense zones, uh, but not uh, a right to do it unilaterally. Fourth, I would like to reiterate that territorial sovereignty issue is China's core interest. On this issue, we will make no compromise, no concession, no trading. Not even a tiny bit violation is allowed. General Chang urged the U.S. not to egg on its allies to confront China over its territorial claims in neighboring waters. But when Hegel met China's leader, Xi Jinping, the tone was a lot more conciliatory. Here's how China's state broadcaster, CCTV, reported on that. A highly symbolic sign of closer U.S.-China ties. After all the tough talk with the Chinese counterparts during his trip to China, U.S. Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel met with Chinese President Xi Jinping. We have attached great value to your visit. I wish your visit will help advance the new model of military-to-military -military relations. Xi Jinping said the frequent high-level exchanges between the two sides will guarantee that the relationship has in the right direction. Hegel's trip to China mainly focused on clarifying policies about the U.S. pivots towards the Asia-Pacific region and developing the new model of military relations. It will require bold leadership that seeks to deepen practical cooperations in areas of shared interests while constructively managing differences through open dialogue, transparency, and candor. China sees the core of this model as avoiding conflict. The competition between China and the U.S. is not a zero-sum game, nor is it containment. Instead, the two sides should review relations from a new perspective and work to open up a cooperative situation with win-win results. But Hegel is one of the few American officials who has openly criticized China while visiting the country. He urged China to solve maritime disputes using international law and make its military intentions more transparent. China and the U.S. have overlapping interests in the Asia-Pacific. The U.S. hopes to keep its dominance, while China has been adamant about its sovereignty rights. On this issue, we will make no compromises or concessions or trades. Not even a tiny bit of violation will be allowed. Hegel has called for practical cooperation between China and the U.S. and greater personnel interaction. To demonstrate, he went to a PLA logistics school for non-commissioned officers in suburb Beijing. It was the first time the school has received a U.S. defense secretary. But as a former sergeant in the U.S. Army, the Defense Secretary is accustomed to talking directly with the enlisted soldiers. And he brought this experience to China, sitting down to dinner with some Chinese cadets. These young soldiers could be future commanders who Hegel believes will play a crucial role in U.S.-China relations. Hegel's visit in China has been marked with unusual straightforwardness on differences. His hard tone during the talks may reflect growing U.S. concern about China's intentions and development. And he raises more questions than solutions. All this and the facts of the China-U.S. confrontations is exactly why it's vital for both sides to keep the dialogue going. Han Bin, CCTV, Beijing. So are the Chinese and American military starting to figure out how to play nice, to share information and talk before there's a blow-up of some kind? Or has each side drawn lines and dared the other to cross it? To help us answer these questions, we have Brad Glasserman of the Pacific Forum, a division of the Center for Strategic and International Studies. Brad is the executive director, and he joins us on the phone from Honolulu. Brad, thanks for your time today. Thanks for having me. So what did you make of Secretary Hagel's and General Chang's comments at the Newser on Tuesday? It was a good meeting. Um, it was 
very much what I expect, and that is that you have the United States, which is quite eager, I think, to reach out and commence a serious and sustained military-to-military -military dialogue, and China, which is, and the Chinese military in particular, which is, I think, a little bit more suspicious of that discussion and concerned about it, what its implications are and, and the de degree to which it actually accomplishes Chinese military objectives and political objectives. Now, the meeting with uh, Xi Jinping seemed at least how CCTV reported to be a lot more cordial and relaxed. Why do you think they framed it that way? Well, it, it's interesting, and it speaks so much to the way that Chinese politics is run and, and, and presented, and that is that Xi Jinping is the supreme leader in so many different ways. This notion of inaugurating a new type or a new model of major country relations, which is sort of the bumper sticker phrase for the way he looks at the U.S.-China relationship, that's his baby. And consequently, what it really requires is the United States and China to be making nice and, and having this conversation and trying to work out, if you will, a modus vivendi between the two. So having uh, Xi reach out and be seen as reaching out to, to uh, Secretary Hegel and Hegel reciprocating fits very nicely into this narrative of China both uh, creating or working overtime, if you will, to create this new relationship and the United States being prepared to reciprocate. The Chinese say the U.S. is egging on countries like Japan and the Philippines to stand up to Chinese territorial claims in the East China Sea and South China Sea to contain China. Do you think this is a fair reading of U.S. intentions? No, it's silly. And in fact, I meet with the Chinese on a number of occasions uh, practically every month, and we tell them that the notion of American containment of China is silly. Uh, that if you were to look at the contrast or to contrast America's uh, policy toward the Soviet Union during the Cold War and its policy toward China even during the Cold War and since then, there's, there is, it's night and day. There's nothing that the United States does that can be considered to be containment. So as far as our allies go, uh, United uh, Japan and the Philippines have territorial disputes with China and believe that territory that they either occupy or administer is rightfully theirs. The Chinese disagree. The Chinese believe that it is precisely America's alliances, which they consider a, a Cold War artifact, uh, as a means of enabling those countries to tweak China. And they see the United States' hand in some ways as being behind them. Quite frequently, they ask us to contain our allies and to, to stop them from being quite so irresponsible. In conversations I've ha had with Chinese officials and, and experts, they oftentimes liken the government in Tokyo to the government in Pyongyang, which I think is, it gives you a, a fair telling of both the way Chinese read this situation and you know, the, the, the silliness of that analogy. Brad Glosserman is the executive director of the Pacific Forum, part of the Washington-based Center for Strategic and International Studies. Now on U.S. Airwaves, a global channel of uncompromising stories. World news, documentaries, entertainment, and culture. Link TV, connecting you to the world. For more information, visit linktv.org.